What is going on guys? It is Trifecta J here, back with episode 14 of my Angels franchise. Starting off, just a look, I forgot to show us in the last episode, we have a 4% increase in our budget. Now simulating through spring training, we go about 500 basically. As you can see, a couple of injuries, and we end up going 14 and 15. A look at the rotation and pitchers. Marco Estrada was very good, and in terms of hitters, Mike Trout, of course, was very good. Martin Prado played very well, and some bench players did make a nice impact. So moving forward, because they were out of options, we had two players who were put on waivers, and that is Albert Bowles and an outfielder, Shane Robinson. So now a look at the trade. Nolan Arenado, he was a guy I wanted to target in the offseason, and so looking at some of the players, it's Emilio Reyes and Javier Baez, and then they seem to be very interested in some of our third basemen, and it's just a variety of which one of those I wanted to get. So now we are in the first series of the season, taking on the Oakland Athletics, as this is a rubber match. We both split the first two games. Henderson Alvarez will be on the mound, the 27-year-old right-hander. You can see our lineup, Quentin Berry is leading off, Adrian Marquez, Mike Trout, Gregory Polanco, CJ Crone, Martin Prado at third base, Javier Baez, and Carlos Perez. Mike Trout is up, he hits that one hard to deep center field, and under it for the final out is Billy Burns, and that will end the top of the first inning. So Archie Bradley, who was acquired in the Andrew and Simmons deal, is on the mound today, the 25-year-old 6'4 right-hander, and look at the lineup for the Athletics, Reddick Kana. Davis and Vote are your two through five hitters. Alonzo is hitting six. So now a full count with one out. Reddick is up and he goes down swinging on the changeup. A beautiful pitch from Archie Bradley. Archie Bradley is a guy who's still pretty young, still has a few years left of team control, but he's got to show something if he wants to reach that high potential that was initially set for him in the minors and on all of the prospect rankings. He was anticipated to be an ace of some sort or at least a one or two starter. And he's not reached that potential. He's had a over a six year already pretty much every season so far. And he's got to pitch very well this year if he wants to really be able to be what he was supposed to be starting off in his career. So now here's a hard hit ball. That one get off the wall. Mike Trout is there. He will fire it in. And it is a double with one out. So I feel like this team, talking about what our potential for this year is, I feel like we should pretty much be a team who competes for a wild card spot, especially if we can get a guy like Nolan Arenado that's a very good 2-3-4 lineup, and Gregory Polanco, Mike Trout, and Nolan Arenado. That has to be one of the best in probably all the majors, and if our pitching staff can pitch well and the rest of our players can play well, Eli Wendell, our top prospect, should be up to the majors at some point. And now you can see a poor decision I sent Carlos Perez trying to bunt him ahead with Martin Prado, and that would be the final out of the inning. Now it's Archie Bradley, who is, his ball is hit deep, but Mike Trout is able to get to it, and it is still tied at nothing to nothing. Mar Adrian Marquez, he's leading off in today's game. He's a guy who could be a very nice hitter. Actually, he's hitting, I believe, second with Gwen Berry leading off. But if we got Arenado, I feel like he would be a very solid leadoff guy. He's not necessarily the base stealing threat, but does have the potential for a very high on-base percentage. So now to the top of the fourth, a 2-0 count. Gregory Polanco up, and that one gets past the second baseman and the center field. So a two-out single for Gregory Polanco. I'm not totally sure if we'll be able to get it, but I definitely think the wild card spot is what we'll be shooting for, trying to get in that game, maybe winning it, and moving forward to a divisional round game, where I feel like that would probably be the limit of our potential for this year. But our first two years have been rebuilding years. They've been about getting young talent, trading our older guys away, and getting some nice prospects. So I feel like this year we have some very nice players. Three of our five pitchers are younger and have some nice potential. You have players like Mike Trout, Gregory Polanco, Eli Wendell, our top prospect who will probably make his debut at some point this year, Adrian Marquez, a lot of guys in the bullpen who are young, talented guys, and they should be able to finally make that run towards the playoffs. And so it will be about just everyone playing up to their potential and being able to make the impact that they should. And if I, f I feel like if they do that, we should definitely be able to make the playoffs. This year also might be one of the first times you really see us maybe start to trade away some of our prospects and try and get some of the higher level major league talent for this roster. You could see another outfielder try and go for him to either be the DH or take Marquez's spot in the outfield and move Marquez, who's a very poor fielder right now, to the DH spot. You could see some more pitching depth, some bullpen guys could be targeted. Of course, Nolan Arnado, you saw that deal. 
and I'm definitely feeling like that's definitely a deal I'm going to be making in the next episode, as here is a hard hit ball, a moon shot to center field for Kana, and the game will be tied up at two, but it's definitely a deal that I think I'm going to be making. I feel like you can justify that trade in terms of realism, as you're giving up three guys, especially if it's a guy like Luis Bautista, who I'm definitely thinking about that will be the guy that I'll try and trade to the Rockies for Arenado. They all have very nice raw power, probably the three of the best raw power guys in our entire farm system that would really fit well in Coors Field. They all have some very nice potential and could really be very good players for them moving forward, especially a player like Javier Baez, who has the potential to be just as good as Arenado is in this game. Of course, he's a lot better in real life, one of the top players, in my opinion, in all of the majors in real life, and is just an absolute outstanding young player. And it will be a great addition to this team. So you can see the throw from Marquez will not get in time. So the Athletics will now have a chance to extend their lead. They now have the lead as Howard Jensik will be making his second appearance in his Major League career. He was one of the draft picks in our first drafts as this ball is hit to the third baseman Prado who makes the play at first base. A great one-handed play sort of scooping a bare handed and now a pop up the Jensik induces. And it's CJ Chrome going towards our dugout. And he's able to come away with a catch. And that will end the inning with no more damage done. So that's good to see. But it is 4-2 as Jensik is still on the mound. Chris Davis hits someone into right center field. It will get off the wall. Trout is there. Davis will get into second with a double as the throw is not in time. So now Jose Alvarez, the 28-year-old left-handed reliever, will come in. He's really mainly in a long relief role for our bullpen so far. Well, that's where he'll start off this season. That ball is hit to Navarro at second. And the throw to first is in time, but the runner will advance. So now the 6'5 right-hander, Miguel Castro, only 23 years old. He's definitely one of those young bullpen guys I was talking about. He's an electric stuff in terms of his curveball, breaking stuff, and his fastball. He gets the final out of the inning. So now we go to the top of the eighth. We're down by two runs. This ball is hit once again by Carlos Perez. He has his second hit on the day. It gets up off the wall as Perez will get into second with a leadoff double. The throw goes into the third to Solano. So now Sean Doolittle will try and slow down this eighth inning run. So you can see Adrian Romine will be on to hit. He is very good against lefties, which is what Doolittle is, and he'll look to score a run. So full count with no outs. A good pitch for him, Doolittle. And it is Romine who will go down swinging the throw to first is in time. So 0-1. It's now an amazing catch. What a play. Quentin Berry hit that one. And the second baseman makes an amazing play. Now the next batter is Adrian Marquez. Perez will round third and head home. So the first RBI of the season for Adrian Marquez. Now it is Mike Trout who is up. And the flip goes to the second baseman. And that will be the final out of the inning. So Miguel Castro will work a perfect bottom of the eighth. So now Ryan Madsen on the 37-year-old closer is on. And the top of the ninth, it's Martin Prado. First pitch swinging. And the throw goes to first. And it is in time for the final out of the game. And that will do it. So the Athletics will take the series 2-1. to one As we will now go 1-2 to two on the season not able to take this first series against the Athletics, which sort of sucks. But if you did enjoy it, if you did, please leave a like down below. I will see you for episode 15. Hopefully have some sort of trade to look forward to with Arnado. Tell me, though, if you want to see that trade. I'm not certain how realistic that truly would be. But if you want to see that trade, let me know down in the comment section below. I will see you for episode 15, which will be coming up in a couple of days. Because I'm out.